The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Welcome to the July 15th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. We knew and I make that one little two by four shift it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I are going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past eight o'clock in the morning. That's right. If you're listening at the normal time slot, it's uh, 107 in the afternoon. Thanks so much for doing that. We'll try to make today's show as pertinent as we can. But if you are listening live, we would love to hear from you. So you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in and you're listening live, you can always send me an email. So send that to Steve at TFNN.com. And if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question in that uh, subject heading, that would be wonderful. Wonderful, Of course, if you're in our Tigers, then, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got U.S. equity futures uh, basically trading the upside. Uh, the NASDAQ actually just slipped down by one point. You've got the Dow up 113. We'll call the NASDAQ NQ flat. The S&P is up seven. The E-mini Russell's up a couple of points there. Spot volatility is below its 50-day exponential moving average. That is a condition that is uh, bullish, directionally speaking, for the S&P 500. Over in Asia last night, a bit of a mixed bag. We'll go take a look at the charts, see what those mean out there. Over in Europe right now, you've got the DAX trading up 175 points. That's one and four tenths percent. FTSE's up 66. That's one percent to the upside. Gold's off two bucks. Silver's up 12 pennies. Platinum's up uh, about two bucks. Palladium's off 53 bucks, nearly 3%. Uh, copper is uh, copper threatening to uh, well close yesterday, negate its daily by the D point pattern. It may negate its weekly pattern as well. Light sweet crude is up a buck 33, trading out 97.14. Yesterday that formed another Gartley buy pattern. I already had one that was in place that uh, never was negated out there. 30 year Treasury right now up 10 ticks. 139.28 is the uh, print there. So, what's all that mean? Well, first, let's go take a look at the general markets, U.S. markets, some um, of the uh, commodity markets out here with my nine panel uh, typically a market update chart out here so just to get a feel for what's going on if we take a look at the es mini here's what we know now what you don't see on this chart is the fact that price is trading above the es mini that is above its oscillator and change line as long as that condition remains it suggests that the es mini should go target that 3842 level that is especially confirmed with that spot volatility which is below its 50-day exponential moving average the 50 days at 2750 the spot is trading out at 2607 the NQ's got resistance to deal with this morning. That resistance is going to be the bottom of its weekly profile, and that is at 11.889. The high so far today is 11.868. So we know that that is a significant resistance level. If price is able to close above that 11.889, should set up a further rally. That rally should take us to the 12.197 area. Yesterday, the uh, dollar, U.S. dollar index, negated its TD9 count top by closing above 108.08. And really, within the past half hour, because this profile was not here before I went to makeup, up to shower, uh, uh, there's a new profile that's formed. So prices trade in into resistance. Now, I don't know whether this, uh, well, actually, this profile should stick. 108.53 is the top of that profile. It's a bullish structured profile. So it negated a TD9 count top yesterday. A bearish reversal candle would confirm a Rhodesman Dominicator top today. And uh, if we do get that, don't know that we will, we're going to go take a look at the currency market. If we did get that, that would suggest that price would pull back to the 106.43, 106.73 area out there. If we take a look at Goldilocks, as long as price uh, stays above, closes above, I should say, 17.04.50, that will maintain its, uh, I believe it's a 
but it was a buy the D point pattern that had formed out there. You close below 1704.50 today, that suggests lower price. Now, silver negated its bottoming signals yesterday. Certainly the TD9 count pattern with a close below 1870.50. Light sweet crude yesterday formed a nice uh, bullish hammer candle, but it was the trading session. So the first buy the D point formed on July the 7th. That did that with that bullish engulfing candle. That was the completion of a one-to-one. -one. Uh, price yesterday got below the one-to-one -one level, uh, but at day's end form a bullish hammer candle. So you've really got two buy the D point patterns out here. That being said, the resistance level for light sweet crude right now is at 99.37. That is the top of a, a new daily profile that is attempting to form. Natural gas is trading above the top of its daily profile, so that suggests higher price. And the 30-year treasury, it's trading above, it's been above for the last four trading sessions, the center of its bullish structure daily profile. Typically, when price closes above the center of a bullish structured profile, price will make its way up to the top. And the top there is in the 142.08. So resistance here right now for the 30-year Treasury, 141.23 to 142.06. So that's generally what's going on in the markets out here. Let's go take a look at what is going on overseas and what all that may or may not mean to us. So we're going to change over. We're going to take a look at those charts. That's the easiest way for us to be able to determine. Well, to, and I can tell you that the uh, Shanghai finished off 56, finished down 56 points, and the Hang Seng 453 last night. But what does that mean, Jelly Bean? What that means to Stevie, when we take a look at the charts now, is if you look at the Shanghai index, that's in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see that that move, that 453-point move, that was a Shanghai. Shanghai was only down 56 points out there. I'll get to the Hang Seng in a minute. So the Shanghai, the upper left-hand corner, down 1 and 6 tenths percent, 56 points. What does that mean? Well, what it did was it formed bar number 8 of a TD9 count. So this is likely to form a TD9 count bottom on Monday and confirm that pattern on Tuesday out there. Now, price may still be targeting that 3272 level, a TD9 count breakout level. That you know, I don't know where the lower price might come to. Does it, we have to get? Do we have to get the lower price on Monday to generate a TD9 count bottom? The answer is no. All we need on Monday, uh, Sunday night, Monday morning, uh, is a close below. 34.3907 inside of the Shanghai index out there. And that'll complete that TD9. Well, the completion will come on Monday. I say completion. The reason to uh, confirm and, and completion, the confirm is you get to the TD9 count so that everything is in order so that we at least have a low on bar eight or nine. But a lower low can form on the bar following bar number nine. That's really what took place in the Hang Seng last night. So the Hang Seng formed bar number nine yesterday. Last night, it was the bar following bar number nine. This suggests that we should see, and you can see it's oscillator and change zone. That's that green, red, squiggly line. What this suggests is that price should go target that level. Now, if we see a close, so if you Monday morning, if we were doing the uh, 8 o'clock uh, show, we won't we'll be back at the normal 1 o'clock slot out there. But if we were and we saw a close below today's low out here, that tells us about a strong momentum move to the downside for the Hang Seng. I don't know that that's going to happen, but that strong momentum move would take us back to the May, or should take us back to the May lows out there. But right now, you've got every, it's got everything in place here to see some type of uh, at least a rally up towards that oscillator and change line. If we take a look at the Nikkei, the Nikkei out here has, uh, has what? You know, it, right now what the Nikkei is did it it, uh, it closed inside its most recent swing point from July 11th with price above the red oscillator and change line it really does suggest going and testing the top of that level the DAX is in a large consolidation pattern price above its red oscillator and change line it suggests it may want to move up to the 1462 14 602 area out there let's do this we come back to this break let's go take a look let's take a deep dive into the currency market see roads with TFNN we'll be right back of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner 
Ready Development Stage Gold Project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro Dollar, Pound Dollar, Aussie Dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. It is 8.18 in the morning. If you're listening at the 1.18 uh, time period, we are recording today's show between 8 and 9. Right now, we're going to spend just a little bit of time taking a look at the uh, currency marketplace out here. So let's begin by taking we're looking at the uh, top three instruments that make up the U.S. dollar index. That's the Great British Pound, the Japanese Yen, and the Euro out here. So let's start with the uh, charts for the pound in the upper uh, the upper left-hand corner. That is the yearly time frame. Now, here's the deal. On a yearly basis, when you see an instrument, doesn't matter what the instrument is, either trade below the prior year's low, that would be a very bearish signal, versus trading above the prior year's high, that would be a bullish signal. So when it comes to, especially important in the early January timeframe out there, uh, January, February, March, what have you. Uh, so right now we can see that the Great British Pound well below last year's low and is attacking the uh, lows from 2020 out here. Now that was a nice bullish hammer candle that had formed. That actually confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator a bottom pattern out there and if that low gets taken out so the 2020 low and that's where price is going to go target so the great british pound should go target the 2020 low now that will put strength into the u.s dollar index out here that low is one dollar and 14 cents out there the reason why i suggest to you that price will go target that level not just because it's trading below the uh last year's low out here but if we take a look at the monthly time frame chart now the month is not over clearly it's only the 15th but if we do take a look at where we are at right now, as of July 15th in the Great British Pound, we are below the TD9 count bottom pattern. Let me just make sure here. So the low, not about what I just said, but the low from two months ago was uh, 1.2156. What was last year, last uh, month's close? 1.2156. Two one yeah so it would be this month so I just when we were taking a look I forget what instrument though I think it might have been the Shanghai or the Hang Seng I think it was the Hang Seng that had that uh, bar number the, the the bar following bar number nine for a TD nine count out here so here this is in play and that's why I suggest to you that unless the Great British Pound stages some kind of big rally and we don't see that just yet uh, that uh, uh, it should go target the uh, 2020 lows don't know whether it'll take it out but that's where its target is on a weekly basis out here what do we have. We have a, uh, we don't have much. We have a, really, we don't have much out here. Nothing to support that the Great British Pound is going to make some type of miraculous rally. So, and, and on a daily time frame, what do we have? Uh, you've got price that stays, but that, 
you've got a TD9 count that was negated yesterday. Yeah, so yeah, this uh, this TD9 count bottom formed on bar number eight, and that was at the low of 1.1876. And uh, yesterday was a close below that, negates that signal, suggests lower price. So the Great British Pound is suggesting to you and I that we should see the U.S. dollar. This should add strength to the U.S. dollar. How about the Japanese yen? When we take a look at the yen out here, the yen is trading above last year's high. Now, in this chart here, when we take a look at the yen, as it moves higher, it is getting weaker. The U.S. dollar index is getting stronger. So in the case of the yearly chart, very bullish. If you take a look at the monthly chart, last month, the gate took out its TD9 count top. In fact, it did it. it there, there wasn't even a hiccup. So this tells us about the uh, incredible weakening of the yen that is going on, and that's going to add to the strength inside the U.S. dollar. If we take a look at a weekly time frame chart out here, no topping signal. There is a Rhodes momentum indicator signal that's present, but that needs a bearish reversal candle to complete. And prices above that green oscillator and change line, that suggests that it wants higher price. We look at the daily time frame chart. You can see that yesterday was bar number seven. Today should become bar number eight, but you need to get a, a at least a spike above yesterday's high. Today, Monday or Tuesday in order to generate a TD9 count top out there. But the yen right now is also weakening. The pound is weakening. So now let's go take a look at what the euro is doing. Now, most of you know what the euro is doing, and that is that it, too, is weakening against the U.S. dollar. But let's go take a look at its patterns out here. Let's not jump to any conclusions. Let's take a look at the big picture. This will help us out. If we take a look at the U.S. dollar. So I'll start with the U.S. dollar you can see is trading well above last year's high. Let's go down to the bottom panel. The euro is trading not just below last year's low, not the year before, not the year before, not the year before, not the, the trade, you know, the euro is trading below what, the 2017 lows out here, 2016 lows. So that's a suggestion that there is an A to a large. I'm talking a gigantic A to B equals CD on a yearly basis that is uh, setting up inside of the euro. It's a biggie out there. If we take a look at the monthly time frame, the monthly time frame, I'll just expand this chart. I'll make it a little bit easier to see. The monthly chart, hold on, I need to pull it back. The monthly chart here formed a TD9 count bottom two months ago. Well, the month is not over. But right now, price is well below that, well below its breakout levels. The monthly chart is saying, I want lower price. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart, no bottoming signal at all in place, You're only in bar number five on a weekly basis. You're below the red oscillator and change line. That suggests lower price. Perfect. So the bigger charts, the bigger time frame charts suggest lower price. The daily time frame chart here for the euro right now is attempting to form a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern. And the way that it would do that is by day's end, it would form a bullish reversal candle. Now, even if it does that, price would need to close above its red oscillator and change line. That's currently at a buck oh one out there to suggest that there's going to be some type of counter trend move. But on the bigger picture with regard to the euro is that it wants to move to lower ground. The U.S. dollar index clearly trading above you know, you've got a big, huge A to B equals CD to the upside. Uh, if we take a look at the yearly chart, you're trading above all, you know, the highs going back to 2016 out here. The monthly time frame chart shows that this month right now could be negating a monthly TD9 count. What that needs is it needs a monthly close above. Uh, 105.06. Well, we're at 108.11 uh, right now. So I'm going to assume at this stage here, the signal is that this wants to continue to move higher. The weekly chart is saying that exact same thing. It wants to move higher out there. There's no topping pattern that's in place right now. And the daily time frame chart right now is taking out its TD9 count breakdown resistance level. That's where it should have found resistance, 104.26. It didn't. Yesterday, well, it did yesterday, but today it's busting above that. And that says that the U.S. dollar index wants to continue to move higher out there. So that's the bigger picture of what's going on inside of the uh, currency markets out there. Why is that important? Well, with regard to the euro moving lower and busting out, let's go change windows here. Let's go to our larger screen, the screen here, and let's get to the chart that I'd like to share with you. Now, many of you have seen this chart in the past before, and that is the global flow of capital chart. And this is really important. This is really important to understand out here because at some point in time, this should take hold. Now, what I'm talking about this is if you go back here, if we what we're as bad as things are across the globe or appear to be across the globe, as bad as things might be out there, this is still about where is capital going to flow to. And if we take a look at the run-up in the, you know, so here's the charts. The top of the, the top, top chart is the euro. Bottom chart is the S&P 500. And the chart, why do I have the, oh, and I've got the euro. So because I have line charts out here, I made the top chart uh, the um, on market close. 
and the bottom chart on the actual low of the uh, uh, the low of the uh, session out there. And in the middle chart is the uh, S and P 500. What we can see here, the run-up into 2000, the 2000 high inside of the uh, equity markets out there, what we saw is capital flowing out of Europe and into the U.S. And that's what created that huge run to the upside. It was the same pattern in 1929. It was the same pattern in 2000. If we take a look at what's transpired here, we've seen that the euro topped back in 2008. It's been moving lower ever since. Uh, we can sh I can show you significant. I can show you I identified here a couple of uh, key dates out here. The, the most key date was uh, when uh, when Mario Draghi, who was headed up the ECB, uh, moved to negative interest rates. And I sure hope they accept his resignation and he's gone because he destroyed the euro. He destroyed a currency market out here. Right now, prices below all those lows out here, we should see a flow of capital into U.S. equities. I'm not saying that it's today, but with the euro cratering, that's what it should result in eventually. So great. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, let's, I still got the euro up on my screen right now. Uh, this is the uh, quarterly time frame chart. The reason I put the quarterly time frame chart is that uh, in taking a look at the A to B equals CD pattern. So here, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put the monthly chart back up on our screen. And, uh, and, and when we take a look at a monthly chart, so this is for doing a – what the heck is happening? Why is this taking so long? Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Oh, man. Stevie, Stevie, Stevie. What the heck's going on here? Well. Wow. So I was going to show you an A to B. There we go. Okay. So if we take a look at this uh, monthly time frame chart here for the euro, coming up with A to B equals CD patterns, you, there, there's multiple A to B equals CD patterns. So whenever you see that and you're trying to get a feel for where, what's the larger pattern, what's the larger A to B equals CD, you just simply go up uh, to another time frame. I'm going to do that right now. This may take just a few moments to uh, apparently to uh, repopulate itself. I don't know why that's the case, but it is. 
because um, I don't really have that much run in the background. But here we've got, you can see, we already discussed this, how the euro is trading below the lows. Now, this is low from 2017 out here. And uh, assuming that, and I don't see anything that is changing that at the moment. So the larger, and this is a quarterly chart, the larger A, to, and it makes the A to B equals CD pattern, at least in my, in my, for my eyes, much easier to see. So the larger A to B equals CD pattern says that the euro is headed to 69 cents. That would be the one-to-one. -one. That would be the one-to-one -one level. 53 cents is the one to one point two seven two. This is only a 0.382 retracement for that B to C leg. What that does is that usually suggests that you do more than one to one A to B equals C D to the downside. Now, that's a longer term picture out there. But think about it like this. If you're sitting in Europe right now and your, your, your currency is, is euros, that's your dominant currency out there. And you can see that the euro is going to continue to get crushed and is headed down there. And you want to try to protect your assets. Uh, what would you do? What would large traders do out there? Well, they would rush into the U.S. dollar or U.S. dollar-oriented type items out here. So longer term, bigger picture out here. This is, you know, talking bigger picture with you. Uh, we'll get to the daily play-by-play -play stuff here in a moment. Uh, but the bigger picture is that what I want you to expect is that there's still going to be a rush into the U.S. dollar index longer term. And you're also going to see the U.S. equity markets move higher. And you'll probably see gold move higher, too, at the same time. But one thing at a uh, time out here. So that's the bigger picture for the uh, euro. And uh, let me get this back to a monthly time frame and we'll move on to something a little bit uh, more play-by-play uh, -play oriented, which means we'll go take a look at the equity futures. Well, actually, before we do that, what I want to do is uh, come take a look at uh, Apple. But you know what? Let's, I'm going to change screens. We'll look at Apple on the, on the other screen out there. So just give me a moment. The white background charts, we'll switch over to those. The reason I'm going to start with Apple, even though it's got the ES Mini that pops up right now, but we'll change over here. The reason why I take a look at Apple is uh, take a look at for signals for the NQ. I think the direction of the NQ should point to the direction of the uh, markets, uh, and that includes today. Now, what Apple did yesterday, so what I can't do with my white background charts is draw the A to B equals CD pattern, but you can visually see that. So that is underway as we speak, and Apple yesterday got to the one-to-one -one level. You don't ever, well, you can do whatever you want out there. I suggest that you don't ever just buy or sell a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. Instead, wait for the confirmation of that pattern. And the confirmation will come in the case of a, uh, an A to B equals CD to the upside will come because you would get a bearish reversal candle. So what you want to be on the lookout for with regard to Apple today, Monday, Tuesday, what have you, because there's an A to B equals CD pattern, is a bearish reversal candle. But what Apple also did yesterday, it was only day number one, so today is going to be muy importante. And that is day number two. Can it close above 147.55? If it does, that's a second close above the top of its daily profile. And it can suggest that this A to B equals CD to the upside will extend itself. The second level that needs to be crossed above, if you take a look at the weekly time frame chart. So Apple's got a daily buy the D point pattern. The weekly time frame chart has a TD9 count bottom out there. And that's the beautiful thing about these uh about these, uh, these these tools here, the TD9 counts, the A to B equals CD, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator. So it doesn't, we don't rely on one tool to help us identify a potential top or a potential bottom out here. You've got a very clear TD9 count bottom on the weekly time frame chart, which typically, and we saw that its oscillator and change line change from green to red. Because uh, oftentimes, you, all you always hear me say when I see that pattern, a confirmed top or bottom, that price is going to go target that oscillator and change line. Well, that's exactly what it has done here. Now, if Apple closes today below that red line, because that, in that red line, that I saw in change line, that would be about 147.95. Now, that price is going to move up or down a tad, uh, depending on price, but just use 147.95. If Apple closes below that, that would be a bearish signal. Now, that bearish signal out there depends what we also see on the daily time frame chart. But if price closes above it, that's what I want to talk about right now. If it closes above that level, that too is suggesting a further rally. And when you take a look at the monthly time frame chart for Apple, it formed a TD9 count top, also generated a Rhodes Momentum indicator top out there. But price found support at the bottom of its bullish structured monthly profile. Yes, last month was a slight close below that level, but we need two consecutive closes. And right now, it doesn't appear that that's what we are going to get out here. So that's the first chart to look at. The second chart here, and I'll put this up on the screen, because these are the top two holdings with inside the uh, NASDAQ 100. Where's that other chart on? that okay so we take a look at microsoft what microsoft did yesterday it tested its uh, swing point this is the swing point from the trading session of june 13th now the white background charts i don't show volume it tested it on like 50 percent of the volume 
That was a test and rejection of a key swing point out there. You can see that in the case of Microsoft, it is a the so the bottom of its profile is the exact same price point as the center of its profile. Lots of buyers hanging out in the case of Microsoft at the 245.55 level. Price never got down there. And if price can take out 256.60 today, close above it, that's going to suggest that Microsoft will run up to the 268.30. If Microsoft sells off today, you watch the 245.55 level. That should be strong support. Microsoft also has a TD9 count bottom. That formed out here the, month, uh, the week of June 17th. What did price do? It did what it's supposed to do when you form a TD9 count bottom, run up to that oscillator and change line. Well, in the case of Microsoft, it's not as bullish looking on the weekly chart as, as the Apple chart is out here because it's gotten up and it's tested and it's rejected that red oscillator and change line. Nonetheless, out here and on a monthly time frame, Microsoft is saying, hey, Stevie, not so fast on that TD9 count weekly chart, that wave number seven, letter G, on your screen that I see out there. Uh, longer term, I want to get to 211.94. Well, to prove itself, it needs to take out that TD9 count bottom from about five weeks ago out there. But right now, to the upside, watch the 256.60, because yesterday was a test and rejection of a swing point on substantially lighter volume in the case of Microsoft. Now, let's go take a look at the uh, NQ charts out here. What do we have up? Oh, we've got the ES Mini. Let's change this to the NQ out here. We'll come back. We can take a look at the uh, uh, ES Mini out here. But let's change this over to the NQ. The other thing, while that is updating those eight time frame charts out here, let's try to understand what the uh, TAS market breadth is for the uh, NASDAQ 100. Now, the TAS, I, I, if you're new to the show and you hear me talk, some of this stuff might, would, would sound foreign or gibberish out there. Those of you that have listened for a long time, you're familiar with the terminology uh, that I use out here. The TAS market profiles um, are where we help to, the, the TAS market profiles provide you and I with a real competitive advantage. Because in taking a look at a uh, chart, doesn't matter what it is, we can understand where buyers and sellers are. It's kind of like it's it's like it's like uh, was it a few years ago when the Houston Astros were um, uh, you know caught stealing signs. All teams are out there trying to steal signs out there. They just happen to be the ones that were caught. Well, TAS market profiles are like stealing signs because we know where buyer we we know what pitch is being thrown. We know where we know where the buyers and sellers are located on a uh, chart out here. So what I've just switched to is the uh, TAS market profiles for four different time frames. This shows us the weekly, daily, 240 and 60 minute time frame. And you can see right now, well, and you know what we'll do, we'll, we'll look at each one. But looking at it here, you can see that we've got two that are set up into the bearish zone. And I'll explain that when we come back and two that are set up into the bullish zone. So it still says chop, chop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it uh, isn't out there. But the daily time frame, is, is very bullish right now. That suggests we should expect and anticipate a rally today. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro dollar, Pound dollar, Aussie dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523.
The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, if you're listening live, it's 842 in the morning. So if you listen on 142, thanks so much for doing that out there. I guess we spent more of the time uh, today during today's show. Take a look at the bigger picture, which is always good to uh, do, uh, even if you're just a short-term trader. Just understand what's going on. Right now, we've got Dow Equity Futures. They're up uh, about six-tenths percent, 183 points. A quarter percent for the uh, NASDAQ. That's 29 points. The uh, s and is up about a half a percent, 15 points to the upside. The Russell's up for the spot politics is uh, well below its 50-day exponential moving average. Everything is really set up for a rally that should last. That doesn't mean we're not going to see, uh, you know, a, a jittery market out there. And that's really what we're talking about right now, which is taking a look at what's going on inside the uh, market breadth for the NASDAQ 100. I think the NASDAQ 100 is where we focus today. Now, right now, for a 60-minute time frame, there are 36 instruments trading above the top of the daily profile, 40 with inside their profiles, and 25 below the bottom. Now, I'm only showing those that are trading above and below. When we get these crossovers, they're bullish or bearish from a directional standpoint. So the 60-minute time frame chart has enough market breadth that price should continue to move higher. We go from the one-hour time frame to the four-hour time frame. When we take a look at a four-hour time frame chart here, what we're going to see is it is slightly bearish. You have 25 instruments trading above the top of their profile and 32 below the bottom. So here this creates this little choppy market that we, and we've even seen that this morning, uh, you know, that may uh, continue. Now if the 240 switches over to bullish, it joins the 60 minute out there and it doesn't need that many instruments, right? We're only talking about seven instruments out here. And the, uh, uh, you know, this is this is also take a look at what's going on in the pre-market, by the way. If we take a look at what's going on in the daily time frame, you've got a bullish crossover. Now, it's just slightly bullish, but it is still a bullish crossover. 26 instruments trade above the top, 23 instruments trading below the bottom out there. And again, if we look at the weekly, not again, but if we look at the weekly out here, this is the first time, this is where we get this choppy kind of market. Only seven instruments trade above the top of their weekly profile and 36 below the bottom. Choppy markets, but when we come back and take a look now at the uh, a second here, let me move this out of the way. And we take a look at the NQ chart itself. Here's what we know from the daily time frame. Daily time frame prices above that oscillator and change line. That suggests we should move to higher ground. Now, higher ground should be the 12, 197 uh, level. I have two different sets of profiles. There's one that for you to know it's using the same data. One set of profiles that forms on the uh, white background ninja trader charts, another that forms on the uh, black background charts. They're both correct. But the 12, 197 uh, level, that's when we took a look at the other uh, chart out there when we're doing the uh, opening of the uh, show. That 12, 197 should be its target. If we look at a five hour time frame chart, Price above its oscillator and change line. The resistance level for this is 11,916. Now that may be that's where the sellers are headed, are, are hanging out. And if price gets up to 11,916, uh, that'll give you a first indication of what the market's intention. Now that's a five-hour time frame chart. So we've only got two more bars here that are going to complete uh, today. One that's going to complete at nine. I believe this is a nine o'clock bar right now. So uh, uh, 
Yeah, so that will complete at 9. The next one is at 2, and then the final one is at the uh, market close. The 240-minute time frame chart. Price is trading above its oscillator and change line. So its level of resistance is 11,872. Write that down on your pad of paper. Why? Because if price closes above that, that says we get to 11,916. If price closes above to 11,916, it says we're on our way to 12,037. You get above 12,037, you get up to the 12,197 level out there. If you take a look at the 120 minute chart, price is already above. I take that back. This is a very bullish chart. When I say it's very bullish, this is what I mean. The 120 minute time frame chart out here had a bearish structured profile. That formed with price above it. That was at about two o'clock this morning when this profile formed. When price, when a profile forms below price, that is a bullish message. Now what price has done during this uh, last uh, two hour uh, segment here, and this was between eight and 10, so this bar will not complete until 10, but price got back to the top of that profile, 11,760, and that is support. In the case of the 120 minute time frame chart, this is suggesting that it's running for its recent high out here. That's the high from 2,200 hours. That's up at the 11,868 area. And if price gets above that, it heads back to this uh, swing point from 10 o'clock on July the 13th, and that's up at the uh, 11,970 area. So you got a bullish condition here inside of the 120 minute time frame chart. How about the 60 minute time frame chart? Price right now on a 60 minute basis is attempting to take out its bearish structured profile out here. And that would just simply require, we need two closes really, but that would require a close above 11,843 or 11,851 right now. What price did during a little bit of a sell off that took place before we came on the air is price pulled back tested and rejected support. That was the bottom of that profile, 11,744. So it's getting ready for liftoff and takeoff and headed to, well, those price levels that we took a look at earlier. On a 30 minute basis, what do we have out here? Price is taking on the resistance of its TD nine count breakdown level. So this is a real key level to be watching. That's at 11,855. Just above that is the top of its profile, 11,861.50. So really, if you get a close above that, that's gonna suggest that the NQ is going to move to higher ground. Now, all of that's really being supported by what we took a look at in in uh, Apple and in uh, Microsoft yesterday. Uh, Apple closing above resistance, Microsoft testing support on much, 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 did I say much, much lighter volume. You can't bust them to the downside, you try to bust them to the upside. So what else do I have out here? Do we really need to go look at the 15 minute and the 10 minute? I don't think so. So what the NQ is telling us is that we should expect and anticipate a rally. And I expect that that rally is going to hold uh, today out here. So let's go take a look at uh, what do you want to look at next? I don't have any requests out there. And uh, let's take, let me just throw the ES mini charts up here because, you know, people, more people are trading that perhaps than the NQ. Uh, but today, my, I think if it were me out here, I've, I've got to run over to Naples, so I'm not going to be trading today. But if it is me, my focus would be on the NQ uh, versus the, uh, versus the S&P 500. And one of those reasons, I should explain that reason. So I think the NQ and the semis are what will or what should lead the uh, market higher out here. Let's, uh, uh, no, that's the wrong thing to show. Let me come back here and let me get to the uh, ES Mini chart out here. Uh, not the ES Mini, but the ES Mini TAS market profile. So let's see this live and see where we're at here. So if you take a look at the ES Mini right now or the S&P 500, see how each of their dials are in the red zone out here? That's why I suggest, so So this market is actually, if we were just focused on the ES Mini, we'd say things are pretty bearish out here. We could find the reasons to be bearish. Uh, we could say that this rally right now, where you've got the S&P up uh, 33 points, is not going to stick. And maybe it doesn't because of uh, of these bearish crossovers out here. But if it's me trading today, I'm more focused on the NQ because of its setup. If, if, if my thought process is that we're going to see a rally as opposed to the S&P 500, simply because of putting all these signals. I don't know if that makes sense to you. Hopefully I was clear on that. We don't need to go through the uh, charts like we did before. You can just see those bearish crossovers that we have inside of the S&P 500. I'm not saying you can't trade the S&P 500. I'm just saying the easier trade may be inside of the NQ. That's really all that I was trying to get to. Now, we take a look at the ES Mini charts out here. The ES Mini on a daily basis shows that prices held that red oscillator and change line. It has held this bullish structured profile and price should go target that top. The target of that top is at the uh, 3842 level. We're trading right now at 3826. If we take a look at the uh, 300 minute chart out here, this is suggesting a run up to the 3843 level. If price close above 3843, you should get a move up to the 3900 area. Uh, right now, you've got price trading above the top of its four hour time frame profile out here. That's at 3812. That suggests higher price. The 30 minute chart, 
120 minute chart has taken out its TD nine count breakdown resistance here. That's at 3806. That suggests higher price. Prices trade about the 60 minute bearish structured profile. That suggests higher price out there. And so too for the 30 minute chart. Today's rally should hold. Let's get rolled with TFNN. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, though, folks. Thanks so much for joining me early this morning uh, during the 8 to 9. I, I do like doing the 8 to 9 uh, session out here. Let's go to a couple of questions. Well, first, uh, KK wrote in, and KK was looking or asking about the U.S. dollar index. KK, I did a really thorough review of the uh, major currencies, so please go back and listen to the archive. It should be posted maybe within the hour or so out there. So uh, do that. We've only got a couple minutes here, and there are two questions that have come in. The first one from Hector, and Hector wants to take a look at ExxonMobil. And uh, Hector, with regard to ExxonMobil, your question is ExxonMobil monthly still bullish long term? It's um, it's neutral. It's neutral versus bullish. It has a TD9 count top. That's a very right-hand uh, uh, chart. But price remains above its green oscillator and chains on and above the top of its monthly profile. And therefore, it really has a a neutral signal versus bullish or bearish out there. The weekly chart has a uh, signal that is, it shows a Rhodes Mintum indicator top that was confirmed with that bearish shooting star candle. Price will move lower and it's done what it's supposed to do, which is get back to support. So the key level, Hector and Patty, for ExxonMobil is 81.92. Any weekly close below that, 
it's going to suggest lower price. But right now, its work to the downside has been completed. On the daily time frame, I do not have a bottoming signal. Price is trading right now in the pre-market, straight about 84.67. That is back above the top of its daily profile. What I expect ExxonMobil to do today on a rally is get up to the 85.66 area. That's its red oscillator and change line. If price can close above that, it should head to the 87.13 area. And then the final question, let's see if I can do this here quickly. Take a look at Google, G-O-O-G. Let's uh, punch those charts. Where is it? Come on. What the heck? G-O-O-G. Come on, we got 10 seconds out here. And the question is, can you look at Google? So this is going to be a quick look. Goes Google yesterday pulls back into its bullish structured daily profile. Uh, Google right now is trading at, let's see here, G-O-O-G is trading at uh, 2248, 2250. So it's going to take out its resistance level. That's a 2260 level, thread oscillator change line. If you get above that, you're looking to move to 2385 out there. You gotta buy the D point pattern on a weekly basis. They've got a nice weekly bottom of your resistance at 1293. Folks, stay tuned. Tommy O'Brien is up next if you're listening at 9 a.m. If you're listening at 1, it's your favorite poll. Okay. Have a fantastic weekend. See you on Monday. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing.